Okay, so far we talk about height and clavia, border, uh, border uh, lightweight block ciphers. Now we are going to move to the third one, present, which is also ISO standard for lightweight cryptography. So this cipher is uh, unlike height and clavia, is a SPN cipher, not a phase style design. So we call that an SPN network, sorry, SPN cipher consists of three layers. Key addition, substitution, and permutation. So recall that a general picture of an SPN cipher looks like this. You have the key, you put it into key schedule, then produce round keys, and use these round keys at the at the at round key layer, then perform substitution and permutation layers. Okay, I don't know why we have AES here. Ah, you know, maybe just to say that uh, AES is also a uh, SPN design. Advanced Encryption Standard was designed by John Damon and Vincent Raymond, standardized in 2001 by NIST because they won the AES competition. Other finals were Serpent, Two Fish, RC6, and Mars. And it has block sizes 128 bits, three key lengths and three round numbers depending on which key length you use. And currently, uh, as far as we know, nobody can break it if you, you know, use it correctly. So, but our topic is present, which is another SPN cipher. So let's see all of the details of this cipher and see how this works. So as you can see, it has a block size of 64 bits. It supports two different key lengths, 80 or 128 where I claim that 80 is not secure anymore. So you should be using 128 bits, but also still it is in the standard. So I believe that in the next review, they should uh, remove it. Anyway, it has 31 rounds. So this means that take this picture, copy it to the bottom 31 times. And at the end, instead of finishing like this, add another key XOR here. This is the idea. So this was published in Chess 2007. And let's see every step and uh, see how it works, okay? So block size is 64 bits. For this reason, we have 64 lines here representing every bit, okay? At the add key layer, we are exoring with 64 bit round key. So regardless of your master key length, Round keys are 64 bit, okay? So we will look at key schedule algorithm to see how we generate those 64 bits, okay? So key addition layer is just simple XOR. Then next, recall that in a SPN cipher, we have substitution layer, then the permutation layer, right? So at the substitution layer, we have S boxes. So there are 16 S boxes here, which has four bit input and four bit output, but they are all identical. So a single S box represented here in hexadecimal notation actually explains this part, okay? So the rightmost bit is the least significant bit and the leftmost bit is the most significant bit in this representation. So assume that all four bits are zero as the input of this S box. So you have zero, 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 zero here. In hexadecimal notation, it is also zero, right? So in this case, it says that the output is C. As integer, this is 12. So this means that 1, 1, 0, 0. Okay, so this is how the S box works. So you do the same thing 16 times in parallel. So this is your substitution layer. This is where the nonlinear part comes into play, where the security lies actually. So this is the place you provide confusion. Now we are at the permutation layer where you introduce diffusion. And diffusion is very simple in this cipher. It is simply changing the places of the bits, okay? So in this picture, this says that this bit is not changed, the place of it is not changed and it stays here. So in the next round, it will be here. But this bit goes here and in the next round, it will come here, okay? So this is how this permutation looks. So I explained the round function, but I haven't explained the key schedule, right? So let's look at the 80 bit key schedule of the cipher. So you have the master key of 80 bits. Let's represent it from K0 to K79 like this. This is your master key. So you actually record it into a register, okay? Assume that you have an 80 bit register and this is there. So the leftmost 64 bits of it 
is your first round key. Okay. Actually, in every round, we will use the leftmost 64 bit of this register. But once we use it, we will kind of apply some operations to this register so it will be different in the next round. So initially, you take the first 64 bits, leftmost 64 bits, and say that this is your round key. Then you perform some operations on this register. Okay. First thing is to do is to right rotate 19 bits. So K19 here becomes the rightmost bit here. So K18, K17 becomes the leftmost 19 bits, okay? So this is how the uh, right rotation actually is performed. Then after this rotation, take the leftmost four bits and apply the S box, okay? So S box is the same S box we mentioned here. Then add the round counter. Round counter means the actually the number of the current round and you are exhorting it. So initially, if it is zero, you are not exhorting anything. When it is one, you exhort this five bits with zero, 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 one. And the round counter is two. This means that you are at the second round. You exhort this five bits as with zero, 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 one, zero, right? At the 31st round, we call that 31 is five ones in bit notation. So you exhort it with this five bits, okay? So in order to better visualize what is going on, here's a picture. So this is your 80-bit register, OK? OK. So the leftmost 64 bits here is actually your first round key. Then you apply 19 bits of right rotation, right? So take the rightmost 19 bits, put it here. Then take this remaining left part and move it here. Then you apply S box to the leftmost four bits. So this S box is applied to four bits coming from here due to rotation. Then you add the round counter to these five bits here. Now you modified your register, right? And this leftmost 64 bits becomes your next round key. Okay. Uh, 128 bit key schedule is similar. This time your register is, uh, contains 127 bits. This time you have a, a 64 bits of right rotation. Okay, here, For, sorry, 67, sorry. Then you apply the S box to the leftmost four bits, but you also apply the S box to the next four bits here. Then at the round counter to these two bits. So as you can see, if you move from 8-bit to 128-bit, the only thing you lose, instead of storing 80 bits, you have to store 128 bits and also apply one more S-box operation, OK? So it doesn't cause as much of a, a performance loss. So let me show you. Uh, recall that this was the 80-bit key schedule. Let's see how this works, OK, in practice. So let me give you an example. So as my 8-bit master key, I choose all zeros, OK? In the hexadecimal notation, there are 20 zeros here, so 80 bits of zeros, OK? So recall that key schedule says that take the leftmost 64 bits, and this is your initial round key. So since everything is 0, leftmost 64 bits is also 0, right? Then we have to apply the key schedule algorithm. Recall that what we do is first rotate it 19 bits to the right. Since everything is zero, rotating it doesn't change anything. Then apply S box to the leftmost bits, leftmost four bits. But you know that the leftmost four bits are all zero. And in the S box table, I show you that zero goes to C, right? So for this reason, this is your round key two. The leftmost 64 bits of your master key now becomes something like this. Okay. In the next round, you will rotate it again, apply the S box again, apply a round counter XOR again, so it becomes something like this. If you continue this way, you see that it, it is getting a little bit complicated, but still, even after 11 rounds, we see a lot of zeros. So this key schedule hasn't that much of confusion diffusion layers. This is why when I cho chose everything as all zero, it took a lot of time to, for it to look like a random value. OK, so this is very important because if you are going to implement present, you are going to use this as your test vectors. Because once you implement the key schedule, what you do is 
take the master key as all zeros and produce the round keys and check if they match with these values. If they don't, this means that you made an implementation error, okay? So assume that you did this correctly. So what is the next step? The next step is the encryption, right? So let's see how the encryption works. So again, assume that I'm choosing all zero as the plain text. This is 64 bits. So there are 16 zeros in hexadecimal notation. And I choose the key as, as all zeros as in the previous slide so that I'm going to use those round keys. So what happens now? Let's go to back to picture and try to visualize what will be the first round output, okay? Let's go back to presence picture. Okay, so I have all zeros here. My first round key is also all zeros, right? Because I chose my master key as all zeros. So after the XOR operation, input to all of the S boxes are all zero bits. But if the input is zero, the output is C. Now, all of the outputs of the S boxes became 1100, 1100, 1100, and so on. So next step is the permutation. Of course, if you have the permutation, it is always a good idea to keep it in a table to see which bit goes to which place. But uh, I have a, I'm trying to do it from the picture. But of course, when you're implementing, it will be harder to follow these lines, right? So you need a table to implement. And in the paper, they provide, of course. So, but let's focus on the picture. So we end up with one, one zeros at the, uh, as the output of S boxes, right? So the rightmost two bits, zero, zero, one goes here, this zero goes here, and this one goes there, and this one goes there. But there's a trick here. This permutation is chosen so that if you divide the cipher from in the middle, the output of right two bits of the S box always stays on the right side of this division, okay? But this two bits on the left part goes to left of this division point. Why I'm saying this? Because if we have zeros in the rightmost two bits, so they will all go here. And all of the ones here and here and here will go after this point. So after one round of encryption, we will have 32 ones and 32 zeros. Okay. You can check it by looking at the picture or looking at the implementation. But this means that after one round of encryption, you will get 32 ones and 32 zeros in hexadecimal. This means eight Fs and eight zeros. Okay. So you keep doing this. And you end up with round output two as this, third output is this, four, five. As you can see now, it's starting to look like random, right? So the diffusion and confusion is, of course, better than the key schedule algorithm. So in a, a shorter time, you start to, to look, uh, start to have random looking values. After 31 rounds, this will be your output. You exit it with your last round key and obtain the ciphertext block. Okay, so this is how you perform a one block of encryption. So if you are using plain text block cipher with an 80 bit secret key, if your plain text is all zeros and if your master key is all zeros, this will be the out, these will be the output of your runs. But generally, we are not, never interested in these values. We look at the you know up, right? Because we are interested in the ciphertext. But again, these are nice test vectors for you. If you're going to implement this block cipher, you need to check if you obtain these values, okay? So in President's paper, they also provided some hardware performance results showing that present, you know, as a better gate equivalent in terms of area, like they implanted in 1500 gate equivalents. Of course, you know, when you change the technology, it is hard to compare, but still they say that they are really fast. And they give some stream ciphers as uh, examples showing that they are really good. So this is also important because in the past, uh, we were using stream ciphers for uh, encrypting data in transit, like in GSM communication and so on, or in Wi-Fi. But lightweight block ciphers and AES became really fast in this implementation. So nowadays we are using block ciphers for this kind of encryption operations.